interesting. Oh, yeah. Okay, joining so us we'll now, see. former acting Solicitor General of MSNBC legal analyst Neil Katyal and senior lecturer at the Yale University's Jackson Institute for Global Affairs and a former FBI agent specializing in counterintelligence investigations, Asha Rangappa. And, and by the way, both. just for the record, neither will be in the office pool and Mika, yeah. neither will mention any names that okay. they may think these people are. Now I turn it over to my co-counsel, Mika. Yes, Mika. Uh, Neil Katyal, um, what kind of questions are circling around Mark Meadows right now? Like, if you were his attorney, what would you be saying to him? Um, you know, I think it's a really, really dicey situation for him. He's obviously tried to block some documents and testimony from coming out claiming kind of bogus executive privilege stuff. But yesterday's revelation from a really credible witness that Mark Meadows sought a pardon as the chief of staff is damning. You know, in order to get a pardon, you know, the Supreme Court in the verdict case says a pardon is the acceptance of guilt. And so that's a pretty strong indicia that there was some sort of criminal intent. And on the question that you were just debating, I do not want to enter your office pool or not, but you guys are debating the question of who actually called these witnesses and gave the, you know, Trump wants, you know, Trump expects you to do the right thing. To me, the interesting question is, was Donald Trump part of those conversations with whoever that intimidator was? My guess mm. is he almost certainly was. And if so, that's a conspiracy to engage in witness tampering. And it's a totally separate standalone crime that the prosecutors could look to in evaluating the case wow. against Donald Trump. So, Neil, just a quick follow-up. You had said that Mark Meadows is claiming this bogus presidential privilege. I wonder whether all of the documents that he already released, all of the text messages that he released uh, before he realized that Donald Trump was angry at him and got him to even say that his own book was a lie, I wonder if he's waived that privilege by all the documents he released previously. Mm. Yes, it's a great point. Sometimes that can affect a waiver if you've partially released it or if the documents have been released by other people or talked to. And Cassidy, uh, you know, the witness's testimony yesterday, so, you know, may, may also do some of that to remove whatever ambit of executive privilege is left. But remember, Joe, Supreme Court eight to one throughout these bogus executive privilege claims uh, already. So I just don't think he has much to cling on to at this point. And Punchbowl News, by the way, is reporting this morning that at least one of those threatening messages was directed toward Cassidy Hutchinson, which further underlines her courage mm. going up to the Hill uh, yesterday. Asha, I want to go to you on, for more of your expertise and your perspective in counterintelligence from the FBI, just about the stunning allegations we heard yesterday of weapons in the crowd, of the president of the United States saying, get rid of the magnetometers, let these people in. They're not here to hurt me, but let's let them have these AR-15s and everything else to, to go up to the Capitol. Uh, what did you make of the testimony you heard yesterday? Yeah, Willie, I think that what Hutchinson did was basically establish a critical link uh, in what we know so far. What we have until now were basically two parts of the conspiracy that seemed a little separate. One was this legal <clears throat> blueprint, the fake elector scheme, and the other was the mob violence, which included militia groups like the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers, who have been charged with seditious conspiracy. But the line between those two has not been clear. What Hutchinson revealed is that there was advanced knowledge of uh, advanced knowledge that violence would take place uh, on January 6th. And not only was it anticipated, but Trump was trying to facilitate it. He was trying to, he wanted to make sure that the people there didn't have their weapons taken away. And he planned beforehand to send them to the Capitol. So I think that there is a question of how much that violence was actually a part of the plan. In other words, were they planning to have them, the, the, these mobs and the militia groups, be the muscle in order to execute the legal coup to pressure Pence and basically take it over the finish line? And so I hope that DOJ is actually investigating that link, which could go for all the way to the top from Meadows and even up to Trump. So, Neil, um, you know, what we also saw in, in this testimony is that Rudy Giuliani and Mark Meadows sought pardons uh, attributed to January 6th, I think the word was used. What does that tell you? 
Um, it does suggest to me, you know, consciousness of guilt. As I said a moment ago, the Supreme Court has said when you uh, accept a pardon, it is the acceptance of guilt. Um, and so, you know, as we try and get into their state of mind, I think that's important. And to have this testimony coming from this witness, I mean, I've seen hundreds of witnesses in my time, but she was credible, balanced, and most of all, a Trump loyalist, not some sort of deep state or anything. And yes, are the Republicans pushing back around the edges of the testimony? Sure, they're saying she's not a senior enough official, or there's not a corroborating witness, yes, to some of this. Um, or they're saying, you know, some whispers that the steering wheel claim has been disputed. Um, but those objections are like about as credible as denying climate change by trying to bring a snowball onto the floor of the U.S. Senate. I mean, we can tell the yeah. difference between weather and climate, and we can tell the difference between a disputed detail and the bigger truth behind it. And she yeah. told the bigger truth. That's what's so devastating. So that's my question for Asha. Just by the way, Rudy Giuliani denied that he asked for that pardon. We'll see. Asha, how important is this testi testimony? Because there are critics who will say, well, it's just one person. Maybe it didn't happen. You know, when you testify under oath and you are telling these stories, uh, what level does that raise the information to? Yeah, Mika, what, what gets me is those uh, texts or tweets that you showed early on about what Hutchinson was receiving from the people around her. What makes her credible is that she had, she had a lot to lose. They basically yeah, told her, yeah. if you protect the people that you need to protect, you'll still be good in Trump world. She had everything to lose. There's nothing that she gained from, from doing this. Um, and so, you know, I always look at that as being, you know, an, a, a critical factor in how credible someone is. I also think that with regard to the disputed parts of her testimony, um, as Neil said, it's one part of a bigger picture. And with regard to, you know, that drive in the SUV, um, what is not being disputed is that Trump wanted to go join his violent mob at the mm -hmm. Capitol. This yeah. was someone who saw this group as his private army, and he wanted to be the general who was leading his troops into Congress. And by the way, if that had happened, we would not be sitting here analyzing which crimes he would li he's liable for, because he would have been arrested days after leaving office. His culpability would be clear. So in whisking him away, I just want to point out the, the Secret Service actually gave him some plausible deniability and, frankly, a, a legal defense that he can now use. Former FBI agent Asha Rangappa and former acting Solicitor General Neil Katyal, thank you. That does it for us.